Here we go. Hey, welcome back here in the Bait Lab, Fish on Northwest. I want to remind everybody, everything presented here in the Bait Lab is brought to you by, or presented by, uh, Max Lure. So with that, I want to talk about three different presentations. I have three different rods here. We're going to talk drift fishing, bobber dogging, or float drifting, and then free drifting, which is one that people kind of throw around, really trying to figure out what that is. Is it from the bank? Is it from a boat? It's a great way to present bait and or eggs uh, to coho especially, salmon in particular, but definitely coho. All three of these methods we're going to talk specifically tonight as it refers to coho. We're about midway going to the third week here of October. We are in the third week of October. And the coho are in the rivers. When this water drops, there's going to be a lot of coho. Chum will start showing up. But you know, these coho will sustain right on through November. And in some parts of our uh, uh, area here, they will be in the rivers into December. So these methods and techniques are applicable for the next couple months easily. So let's talk drift fishing first, something we utilize for salmon fishing, steelhead fishing. Uh, can definitely still do it. It's old school. It's been around forever. It's what most of us learned growing up back in the day and how to present. Drift fishing is very simple. Uh, modern rods today are extremely light. This is a nine foot four, um, six to 15, very sensitive rod, ideal for drift fishing. Sensitivity is key so you can feel every little tap and bounce. The other thing I've done is nowadays I use a bait caster, level wine. I like to spool those up with braided line, believe it or not. Um, the telegraphing of braided line is so fantastic. Picking up every little tap and nook and cranny as your weight drags bottom or bounces along the bottom or as uh, applied uh, appropriately comes in contact with bottom every so often. That telegraphs up that line extremely well and you can feel it in a uh, well-balanced rod. Now, the one thing I will say is do continue to tie that top shot of 15 to 20 feet of monofilament on top of your braid because you have to have that built-in braking system into your presentation. We don't want to leave a lot of braid in the river if you do get hung up. So if your leader doesn't break off, and somehow you manage to snap that braid, you're gonna leave that braid in the river, it's gonna be there for years. So put that top shot of monofilament on, better for the environment, better for uh, everything overall. This is a very simple rigging. We are tying our top shot to a barrel swivel, snap swivel, basically in line. I don't use a three-way drop or anything like that. And I basically just are hooking on, I like to use stick leads for drift fishing simply because they do not get hung up. They go uh, very well on the drift, very seldom get hung up. And when they do, you simply bounce that rod up and they come right out. Now you can use slinkies, you can use uh, pencil lead, different types of things. These stick lids, tried and trued, work fantastic. It's very, very simple. I mean, we're talking about, about a 30 inch leader. Let that weight bounce bottom. This is a fixed rig. This is not a sliding rig. 30 inch leader, I'll put some type of small flotation on there, fish pill. Uh, cheater, corky, size 10, 12. And I'm down, because it's coho, we're not fishing steelhead with this right now, this is coho, that's a two odd hook. That's all I need with some eggs in the bait loop, little flotation on there, also for color in stained water. And we're just drift fishing. And we're gonna work that water inside to out. And seldom will I cast past the current seam as it is out in front of me. The water moves too fast. Maybe it's a deeper moving hole. I wanna fish that soft water on the inside, drift it on through. I wanna hit the next piece of water out uh, several feet beyond that, drift it on through. Now remember, when you're drift fishing, you throw it up river, as it swings down to you, collect your line and your slack, and you feel that weight bounce bottom every so often. And on the swing, basically, unlike using a float, which we'll get into in a minute, that line is gonna pendulum in at the end of your drift. And always remember to leave it sit there on the inside of that current uh, just for a couple seconds, allow it to sit there. A fish may swim over and pick that up. They may have pulled it in off of the seam. They come following it in. And when it settles, they're oftentimes gonna pick that up. So don't be too quick to reel that presentation in at the end of the drift. You wanna allow it to lay there, let a fish come by and pick it up, okay? It will pendulum in unless you develop the skill set of also deploying out line from your reel on the swing, which elongates or prolongs your drift, okay? Much easier to do with a float, which we'll talk about in a second. But for drift fishing, more times than not, you're going to work that piece of water. You'll cast it up, swing it on through, pendulums in, tucks inside, 
reeled in, rinse and repeat. It's a great way to present eggs, uh, or indoor bait, shrimp, what have you. Yeah, the weight that you choose is one that <clears throat> you wanna have the rod tapping cadence as it goes through the drift. Every so often, just touch and bottom. You don't want it rapid fire constantly just dragging. You have too much weight. It's moving too slow in the current. You have too much weight for the speed of water. If you never come in contact with bottom, then you do not have enough weight and you're not getting it down into the strike zone as you are attempting to do, okay? Also pick water that's not moving faster than say normal walking speed, uh, too fast of water to hold fish. And if you are fishing faster water, make sure you're fishing the inside of that current seam just enough to pick up your drift and swing it on through, okay? So reading water is important when drift fishing, old school approach, still very applicable, still works very well. Set yourself up with a nine, nine and a half foot rod, spinning or casting, and it's gonna be very successful. Now kind of a, a evolution off of that. This is, you guys have heard me talk about this before, bobber dogging, but when we're standing idle and fishing from the bank, uh, bobber dogging or float drifting as I call it, because if I take this float off of here, this presentation, albeit I don't have a corky or cheater on here, uh, not typically needed because I'm using a float, so it presents just slightly different. I will run a dual hook setup like I do when I'm bobber fishing for Chinook and Coho. I'm running again about a 28, no more than a 30 inch leader, okay? Tied to that same type of swivel setup. And basically you're running a stick lead because they move so well through the water column, they bounce along, which is what you're doing now. Remember, we're not fishing vertical. We are dragging our lead. Our bobber stop is up our top shot about at least eight feet so that when this uh, goes out into the drift, all right? Let me get that straightened out. This is basically dragging bottom and my floats up here. Now, if the water is deep, the angle on your line, if this is on the bottom and my float is here, the angle is gonna be steep. If the water is shallow, this just pendulums out. Float is going down river, lead is dragging, that's perfectly fine. That's the beauty of bobber dogging and or float drifting is it's self adjusting. You're still using the float at the surface, it's pushing your presentation through the water. The lead is dragging. The eggs typically are within a foot or two of the bottom. Neutral buoyancy with most of our cures, it makes your bait uh, semi-buoyant or neutral buoyant, and they just kind of tumble along. It really does a nice job of putting your presentation right in the strike zone of where a lot of these fish travel. Now, I'm not using this presentation in a slow moving, deep hole where predominantly Chinook are gonna stage up. I'm gonna use this in six, no more than eight foot of water, but ideally four to six foot of water, traveling lanes, water that's tucked along the shoreline, nice little riffle pattern coming to it, a pretty constant laminar flow of current, just moving your presentation along, ideal water that coho are gonna travel through, okay? I am not gonna vertical fish for coho that are in traveling water, I'm gonna drag lead, slows it down just enough, and especially if you've got jacks in the river, they will flat out jump all over eggs presented on a float drifting setup. So basically, again, this is, this is drift fishing with a float. You guys have heard us talk about it numerous times. Bobber dogging for many when you're in a boat and moving. Float drifting when you're standing idle. Drift fishing with a float. You can work the water. Same process, inside to out. In other words, I'm casting inside seam, drifted on through. Now, with this, as it gets towards the end of my drift, I can depress my button or open my bale on my spinning rod, and I can send line down river and extend that drift, which helps cover a lot of water. It's not gonna pendulum in, unless you close your bale, clamp down on your reel, and allow that to swing in, okay? So you can let it go down river as far as you want or are willing to set a hook, and then go ahead and reel it back in, redeploy. Work the water inside out, cover water, move down. It's a great means of covering water. It's a great means of presenting in water that's moving when you have traveling fish. This is a nine foot four rod for drift fish fishing. Works fantastic. This because we are utilizing a float, trying to mend line and keep that braided line off the top of the water. Uh, I'm using a 10 and a half foot rod. You can get by the 10 foot rod, 10 and a half gets it done all day long. Really a nice way to present bait. Really a great way to uh, teach people to fish. The float works as a great strike indicator. Also helps them understand how to dissect water and how that is gonna move through uh, the water column. Now for free drifting, okay? Free drifting is a little bit different in presentation. This is a spinning rod 
um, 11 foot 4, 11 foot 3, 11 foot 4. It's rated at 10 to 20 in the event you do hook a Chinook, but it works uh, fantastic for coho as well. This is a really fun way to fish, okay? Uh, two out hook, 30 inch leader, simple barrel swivel right here is all I got. And I tie on a little tab of 20, 25 pound mono, it doesn't matter. This is where I'm putting my weight. Now I can simply uh, clamp on a little split shot right here, okay? And I can leave that tab of line hanging there, it doesn't matter. I can utilize some holocore 1 8. We can put this holocore on here. Just push that on up the line, okay? And all you have to do is take your pliers, crimp that on there, okay? That's not going anywhere. If it does get hung up, nice thing is it pulls right off because you haven't crimped it down so tight that it can't slide. The reason we're using such minimal weight, I mean, just barely enough weight that it's easy to cast. And that's also why we're using a longer rod with a spinning reel. Now, all we're presenting out here is a nice chunk of eggs. Nice piece of cured up, you know, some of my Potsky's eggs. I'm gonna put it in the bait loop, okay? Secure that on there. I'm gonna take this long, very soft approach spinning rod and I'm just gonna pitch it out there. Now, I'm gonna pitch it a little exaggerated up river into the current because I want it to have time to slowly sink. The idea here is we're not going after fish that are hugging the bottom. For the most part, we're getting those mid-level fish. Some of those fish are suspended three, four feet up off the bottom. And this does a really nice job just naturally presenting bait in the water column as it just kind of floats on through. If you do contact bottom once in a while, that's okay. Uh, if you're hitting bottom constantly with this small amount of weight on, you're probably fishing too slow of water. You need to find ideal water where those fish will be moving. We don't want it as fast a water as I'm say presenting bob or dogging or float drifting or drift fishing. It can be just a little bit slower, but again, I'm not really focused on those deep pools that hardly move. I do want some laminar flow. I do want it moving through the hole. I do want to find water that's conducive to having fish travel. Presenting on a, um, with hardly any weight, no float, nothing on here. When they make a grab on that bait, hold on because they flat out will just commit to that bait as it floats mid in the water column naturally, tumbling at natural current speed. I think it's why they get so attracted to it is because of that presentation. So free drifting is a really great and exciting way when there's a lot of coho moving, it's a great way to present eggs on the drift without having a contact bottom. You seldom get hung up and again, get ready for the grab because when they explode on that bait, uh, they about rip the rod out of your hand. You can probably do this with a 10 or 10 and a half foot rod I recommend a spinning rod for most applications just for the ease of casting. A lot of folks, maybe you don't maintenance your bait casters as often as you should. They don't freely pay out as often or as easy as they should. And uh, it prevents a lot of backlash headaches by simply using a spinning rod. Longer spinning rod is going to make it easier just to uh, soft toss to get it across. Um, so look for something in that regard. All right, that'll do it for us uh, this week here in the Bait Lab. If you got any questions, hit us up on Messenger via Facebook or even YouTube. Um, any questions that you have, always message us up here at Fish Hunt Northwest. We're going to jump out for a quick break. We come back. We'll be back in studio with Tommy Donlin to close out the show.